Okay, let's get started. So, week three of math counts, we're going to do number theory. All right, this is like one of the key topics that we're going to go over. So, let's get started. So, the topics are divisibility, modular arithmetic, and basis. And the reason we're not doing any math counts problems today is because all the problems in each of these topics are going to be math counts level. So, I don't think we'll need to have a specific section dedicated to math counts problems today. All right, so all of these problems I'm gonna give you, they're gonna be around math counts level, okay? So let's first start with divisibility. So what does it mean for something to be divisible, right? So let me say, well, what are the divisors? Divisors are numbers that can divide into an integer. For example, the divisors of eight, one can divide into eight, two, four, eight, okay? So those are the divisors of eight. And eight, we call eight being divisible by each of these four numbers, all right? These four numbers are divisors of eight, and eight is divisible by each of these four numbers, okay? So sometimes we're gonna have really big numbers, like let's say, okay, let's say we have this number. How do we know what this number is divisible by, right? We could always divide them and see if they turn out to be an integer, but that always takes quite a bit of time. So we have these things that can help us with dividing. These are divisibility rules. And here's a table of all the useful divisibility rules. So for two, obviously, if the number is even, then um, it's divisible by two. So that means that you have the last digit's gonna be a two, four, six, eight, or zero, okay? For three, this one's really cool. If the digits sum to a multiple of three, it's the whole number is divisible by three. So this means that if I were to add all these digits together, it's two plus six plus five plus four plus three plus nine plus one, if all those added together equal to a multiple of three, then the whole number is a multiple of three, or the whole number is divisible by three, okay? So the last two digits are divisible by four, determine divisibility by four, okay? So this is because 100 is divisible by four. So if you were to take the 91 out of this number, and then we were to add it on, obviously this number is divisible by four because it's a multiple of 100, and four is divisible by 100, or 100 is divisible by four. So all of this is already divisible by four, which means that all we need to test is the last two digits. If they are divisible by four, then the whole number is divisible by four, all right? Five is pretty easy, ends in zero or five. For six, if it satisfies the rules for both two and three, then it works. Ethan, you have a question? Like what about seven? Why is there already seven? The seven rule, it's, um, it's pretty complicated. And in most cases, I would just divide the number. It's, it's a lot easier to just divide it than using the seven rule. All right, but there is a seven rule. You can search it up later if you want. So for six, six equals two times three. So if six is a multiple of two and a multiple of three, then this number is a multiple of six, all right? So similarly, let's say we want to find, oh, what's a multiple of, I don't know, 15, all right? If the number is multiple of 15, we don't have a rule for 15, but 15 equals five times three, so if we test divisibility by five and by three, if it's divisible by five and three, then it must be divisible by 15. All right, so that's a little trick that you can do to figure out um, the visibility of larger numbers, which are two numbers multiplied by each other. For eight, the rule is very, very similar to four because eight is, a thousand is divisible by eight. So if we were to take the three out of here, and we're gonna put the three on here, then obviously all of this is divisible by eight. So all we need to test is the last three digits. If the last three digits are divisible by eight, then the whole thing is divisible by eight. Now for nine, if they sum to a multiple of nine, it's divisible by nine. So this is almost like, this is very similar. It's almost exactly the same as the rule for three. Any questions? So where you could take a screenshot or anything you want to write this down. It's pretty useful.
Okay. I have three problems here. Five minutes on the clock. Uh, when you get your answer, you can chat it to me and I'll tell you if you're right or not.
All right, that is time. I will explain these now. So the first one is pretty easy. We want to check which one of these is not a divisor. One is a divisor of everything. So now we're going to test three. Is three a divisor of this? Well, the rule for three is that we add all the digits together. So two plus eight, which is 10, plus six, 16, plus five, 21. So the sum of the digits is 21. 21 is a multiple of three, so that works. What about five? Well, the number ends in five, that works too. So by logic, the one that doesn't work is nine. So this is the one that's not a divisor. And we can see how it doesn't work also by looking at the sum of the digits, right? That's not a multiple of nine. So the whole thing's not a multiple of nine either. For next one, we have this number and we wanna put in a value of D so that it's divisible by six and the D is as large as possible. So first of all, we know that divisible by six means that it has to be two and three, right? Divisible by two and divisible by three. Well, the number is already divisible by two because the last number is a two. So we don't really need to care about that anymore. All we need to do is make this number divisible by three. Well, the rule for three is that we add all the digits together. So seven plus two plus D plus two, it has to be a multiple of three. So this is gonna equal to seven plus two is nine plus two, 11 plus D. So 11 plus D is going to be a multiple of three. Well, now I can just test numbers because there's not gonna be that many. So we're gonna find that D must equal seven, which will make 11 plus D equal 18. And that's gonna give the largest value of D. All right, for the last one, a lot of you were almost there, very close. So if we want it to be divisible by 15, it's gotta be divisible by three and five, right? Because 15 is three times five. So for five, let's start with this one. Five, the last digit has to be a zero or two or, or a five, right? So we can only have zeros and twos as, as digits. So we have to put a zero as the last digit. Because if we put a two, then the number is not going to be divisible, divisible by five at all. Okay, so the number at the end, the digit at the end, has to be a zero. Now we've got five done. We can ignore that for now. Now we've got to make it divisible by three. So how do we do this? Well, the sum of the digits has to be a multiple of three. Well, it's like technically zero is a multiple of three. But zero, that's not divisible by anything, right? So we've got to add some sort of digits in front of it. How do we make this, um, how do we make the digits add up to a multiple of three? Well, if we keep putting more zeros, that's not gonna do anything to get us to a multiple of three because zeros contribute nothing to the sum of the digits. They're not gonna do anything. So we wanna get as quickly as possible to a multiple of three by using as few digits as possible. Since zero is not gonna do anything to get us to multiples of three, we gotta add twos, all right? Let's put one two. Does that work? No. Another two? another two. Okay, so now two plus two plus two is a multiple of three. So now this number works. All right, if we put any more zeros in front of this, it's not going to add anything to the sum. All right, it's only going to make our number bigger. So this way we can minimize this number. And that is the answer. All right, I see a lot of you got in the chat very quickly after I explained the first step. Nice job, guys. Now we're going to go over modular arithmetic. Um, I don't think a lot of you have done this before, but it's a lot less scary than it sounds, okay? Modular arithmetic is basically a fancy word for um, math we do with remainders. For example, we know that eight divided by five gives a remainder of three, all right? So basically modular, modular arithmetic is like the math we do with remainders. We're gonna look at this and we're gonna do some math with it. Okay, so modular arithmetic has a fancy notation and notation is kind of the way we write things. And modular arithmetic um, basically goes like A equals B mod C. This is basically the format in which you're gonna write things. All right, specifically for this problem, for eight divided by five equals remainder three, we're gonna write it as three equals eight mod five. Okay, so this basically says that a mod five basically says that if we do a divided by five, the remainder is equal to three. Okay, so a mod five equals three. Similarly, if you were to have something like um, 17 divided by three, 
Well, that gets a remainder of two. So we're going to write two equals 17 mod three. Okay. So that's basically the way we write things. And we've got a few rules with mod, uh, mods, okay? I, I like to call them mods because modular, uh, kind of a long word. All right, so let me first label these values in this format. A equals B mod C. It's the same thing as saying, um, let me draw an arrow here. Same thing as saying B divided by C equals remainder A. That's the format. Now we've got a few rules here. First, we got the sum rule. The sum rule says that if we have some random value k, okay, it could be any value. If we add k to a, then we add k to b. Okay. We have a difference rule too. A minus k equals b minus k mod c. I'm going to explain these later on. Okay, so don't don't get uh, too scared about these just yet. And then we've got the multiple rule. It's just if we multiply k by a, we already get to k times b mod c. And finally, you got the power rule, which is a to the power of k equals b to the power of k mod c. So these are the four rules for modular arithmetic. So this basically says, let's see, let me first draw out an example here. So what does a equals b mod c even mean? Well, it means that if we have b total objects, let's say we have a bunch of objects, this is b, right? Because b is being divided by c. And we're going to put these b objects into c, into groups of c each. So let's say c equals three. So we're going to clump them into groups of three. Then a is what's left. So this is a, okay? And c is the how many um, values in each group. So now let's look at what happens if we add a number k to each of these. So if we add k to b, then that's adding k values to our group. So we added six. Let's, let's add seven, okay? So if we add seven to b, then the remainder is going to increase by that much as well. Because the remainder basically says, oh, how many values are outside of groups? How many values are out or by themselves? So A is going to increase. Oh, no. Oops, sorry, guys. Let me return back. Oh, they got, all got deleted. That sucks. So let me just draw them again. So first we have A plus K equals B plus K mod C. So back to our example, let's say we have a certain number of groups, okay? I'm just gonna draw big circles for groups. And we've got a remainder of two, okay? If we were to add K, let's say this is K, okay? If we add K to the total group of B, then we get this value. And the remainder is gonna increase by this value as well, right? Because the remainder is basically what's outside of the groups, all right? So this is how A plus K equals B plus K mod C. All right. Similarly, if you were to a minus k, it basically means that let's say we're taking away four um, items from this group. If we take away four items, then we're basically unpacking this group and taking two out. So b has been reduced by k, a has been reduced by k. So in the beginning, we had two, right? Two was a, two equals, uh, let's just say it was. Um, 17 mod three, right? If we subtract K from it, we subtracted four. So we can subtract four on both sides. Right? Remember the whole group of 17 is gonna decrease by four. Two is gonna decrease by four. So we're gonna get negative two equals 13 mod three. Well, we have one remainder. We don't have negative two remainders, right? So this is the thing with negative mods. Negative mods basically go backwards. This basically says, how many more uh, values do I need to add 
So I have zero mod three, right? Because if we get to zero mod three, then we're going to have a whole group. So this value basically says, how many more objects do I need to add in order to get to a whole group? Okay. So this is basically how minusing works. And this is how negative mods work. Negative two mod three is equal to one mod three. Okay. They're basically the same thing because negative two is basically going backwards into the group. Minus two into the group equals one outwards from the group. All right. I know that's a little bit confusing. Do you have any questions about this? Cool. Now let's go to the example with the multiple rule. Multiply k. So let me say we have these groups now and then these two extra as our remainder. The total is going to be multiplied by b. This means that the total number of groups is multiplying by k. Total number of remainder is also being multiplied by k. If we multiply the groups by k, we're only going to have more groups. All right. These are not going to do anything to add up to our remainder. All right. So we don't even need to care about them. So all we care about is how much is the remainder increasing here? Well, it's going to multiply by some amount. Okay. So this is why all we need to do is multiply the remainder right here. And we get k times a equals kb mod c. Because all of these, they don't matter because they don't matter to the remainder at all. All right. So what this means is that, let me say, let's go back to our example. If we had 2 equals 17 mod 3. Let's say we're multiplying this by 4. Then we get 8 equals blank mod 3. I don't know what that is. doesn't really matter. 8 mod 3. So 8 is the remainder if we divide by 3. Well, we can make this even simpler because now we got 8 strays. These, this is our remainder, right? But we can, we can group these into groups of three. And in reality, we only have two mod three. So even if we multiplied it by four, it got us to eight, but eight is the same thing as two mod three. So sometimes if you multiply it, sometimes you might get to the same exact value, but that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. That's just the way it worked out. All right, any questions about that? All right, so now the last rule we got is the power rule. It works very similarly to the multiple rule. We got groups again, we've got uh, remainders, okay? If we were to take these groups to the power of themselves, we're just adding more groups, right? Because the power is basically repeated multiplication. So we're gonna have even more groups and that doesn't matter. So all we need to care about is the amount of increase in the remainders. So this works very similarly to the power rule. All right, so those are the four rules for mods. Any questions? So you may ask, why isn't there a dividing rule, right? There's multiplication, there's addition, there's subtraction. Where is division? I want my division. Well, that doesn't work for mods, right? Because since we're dealing with the remainder only, then that doesn't consider all the groups we have. When we divide, we consider all of them. So let me give you an example here. We have three equals um, eight mod five. Let's say we, um, actually, that's not a good example. Um, I have a good example here. Yeah, three equals 15 mod four. All right. So actually, this is not right either. Uh, 15 mod four is actually going to be, oh, it is three, OK? So three equals 15 mod four. Let's say we divided both sides by five. Remember this mod, this is just saying how many groups we have, how we're gonna divide it up. This doesn't, this value, we can't do any math with that. All right, so when we divide both sides by five, we can only do it with these two numbers. So we're gonna have three fifths equals 15 divided by five, three mod four. This basically says that if we divide three by four, the remainder is going to be three fifths. But three divided by four, the remainder is three. So three does not equal three fifths. So this will not work. All right. So that's why we can't divide both sides by a number. Okay. Any questions? Okay. 
So let's do some problems then. So maybe I'll give you guys one minute to think about the first one, then I'll go over it, and maybe I'll give you guys a better idea of how to do the rest of them. Okay, so how about one more minute on the first one, then I'll explain it. Just go over this for now. All right, then it might give you a better idea of how to do the rest of them. So the number x has a remainder of 7 would divide by 9. What's the remainder when 5x to divide, divide by 9? So basically, we have x mod 9 equals 7. Now we got to multiply each side by 5. So 5x mod 9 equals 35. So 35 is the remainder when we divide by 9. Well, when we divide by 9, we can really only get remainders of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? When you do, um, let's say you do 65 divided by 9. Right? Your remainder is not going to be some big number. It's going to be um, it's going to be 2, right? So remainders, 35 does work, but it's not technically it's not a remainder yet because we got to get it in this range. So how many so let's just say we have 35 now. We can clump these into groups of nine further, right? We can have, if we have um, 27 here, right? Because 27 means we got three groups of nine. So if we clump 27 of them together, they go away into the, the whole mass of groups we have. So they don't contribute to the remainder. So all you do is do 35 minus 27. We just get eight left. Because if we were to clump, um, if we were to group these up later on of this 35, we're going to get eight left, OK? So that's the remainder for the first part, eight here, OK? The second part, what's the remainder when it's divided by 3? Well, first, let's turn x into some mod 3, right? x mod 3 equals what, right? Well, 
let me, let's just draw out x here. All right, we have x equals some number of groups, and we have seven left over. If we were to do mod three, then each of these groups, we're going to have three groups of three, right? Because we had nine initially. Now we can group these three and these three. Oh, one left. So x equals one mod three. Sometimes drawing a little a picture like that is going to help you solve the problem. So one equals x mod three. We can just multiply both sides by five. 5x mod 3, 5. Well, we have, get, we have 5 left, right? This is our remainder, but we can still clump them together. We can take a group of 3 and send them away. So now we've got 2 left, and that's the remainder. Okay, so 5 mod 3 is the same thing as 2 mod 3. All right. Does everyone understand how that works? Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes to do the, the next one here. X minus 18 equals 20 mod A lot of people are getting really close to the answer, but it's not yet there. Oh, there it is. All right, one more minute on this. All right, I'll explain this one now. So first of all, this is almost like an equation. We want to get x by itself to make things easier for us. So let's just add 18 to both sides because we can add stuff in mods. So we get x equals 38 mod 23. Well, x is not yet 38 because remember when we have 23, we can still have numbers less than 38 because remainders of 23 can be 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 22. All right, because if we have 38 as a remainder, I said this is 38, we can group them. We can get a group of 23 out of there, right? So if we subtract each side by 23, well, x is not really be multiplied minus by 23, but if we minus 23 from here, it gets the same remainder because 38 mod 23, if we minus 23, we're just taking an extra group out of that. So we have the same remainder. So 38 minus 23 is 15. So x equals 15. And that's the smallest possible value, positive value for x. Because if we were to minus 23 again, it would turn into a negative. OK? Actually, I think I skipped over one. OK, here it is. How about you guys do the first one there? It's, it's a very common problem. Three minutes for this one.
this one is a little bit challenging. So don't be, don't be worried if you don't get it right. All right, now let's explain this one now. So let's first write this out into mod form to make things look easier for us. So you got two equals n mod three, three equals n mod four, four equals n mod five. What is that? Five equals n mod six. Hmm. Well, it seems like well, all the remainders for these are different. So it seems like the only way is to guess and check. Well, there's actually a really smart way to do this. So observe how two is the same thing as negative one mod three, right? Remember negative mods, right? Two is the same thing as negative one mod three, because if we add a one to this, we'll get two from full group of three. Three is negative one mod four. Four is negative one mod five. Five is negative one mod six. So we can rewrite all of this. Negative one, negative one. Negative one, negative one. Now all of them have the same remainder, which means that if we find the least common multiple of all of these, and we subtract one, then we get n. Okay? So what is the least common multiple of three, four, five, and six? Well, that's not that hard. We got three times four times five, because six is already three times two, 60. So n is going to be 60 minus one, 59. And that's the answer. All right. And if you were to check them with all of these values, you can see that it works. So by turning all of them into the same remainder, all you need to do is take the least common multiple of all these numbers and subtract that remainder out or add that remainder in, whatever, okay? Any questions about that? Cool. Last topic for today are bases. So you may see, you may have seen these base 10 blocks. These are called base 10 blocks. I used them when I was in uh, third grade, okay? So we have cubes. We have rods, we have flats, and we have, uh, what are these called? Blocks, these are called big blocks, all right? So cube, each cube is one, each rod is 10, each flat is 10 times 10, 100, each block is 1,000. So we can represent numbers with these building blocks, right? If we were to have the number 351, we would have three flats, five rods, and one cube. Okay, so as you can see here, these are all powers of 10. 1, 10 squared, wait, not 10 squared, 10, 100 is 10 squared, and 1,000 is 10 cubed. All right, so this is the base format we use for all our daily math lies, right? 351 means 3 times 10 squared, 5 times 10, and 1 times 1. All right, 3 times 10 squared, 5 times 10 plus 1. All right, so this is base 10. This is what we call base 10 because each of these values, we're multiplying by 10 to get to the new, to get to the new level. All right, but we don't always use base 10 in math. 
For example, computers run on base two. So what does this mean? If we use base two, this means that the blocks are, the, the cubes are still one, but the rods are gonna be only two long. The flats are only gonna be two by two, like this. And the big blocks are only gonna be two by two by two. Okay, so in base two, and we, when we use different bases, we're basically using different types of cubes, uh, rods, flats, and big blocks. Okay, for example, if I wanted to have the number nine and turn this into some kind of number in base two, well, here it's one, each, each cube is one, each rod is two, each flat is four, each big block is eight. So having number nine means that we have one big block, zero flats, zero rods, and one small cube. And we write it like this, with a little two at the bottom, meaning it's in base two. So the number nine in base 10 is one zero zero one in base two, because we need one big cube. Then we will only need to have one left, right? So we don't take the flat, we don't take the rod, we just take one little block. All right, so this is basically how um, different bases work. All right, so let me give you another example. If you were to have base, uh, let's say we want to put 20, 27, actually 32 into base 5. All right, 32 base 10, turn it into a number in base 5. How do we do that? Well, in base 5, we're going to have a small cube, then we're going to have a long rod of 5 like and we're gonna have a flat which is five by five that's not five okay five by five and then the big block is going to be five by five by five so this is going to be five to the it's just going to be ones then this is going to be the fives place the five squareds place and the five to the cubes place just like tens right if we were to use in base 10 we we're going to have a um a one base, a 10, a 10 squared, a 10 to the cube. So basically we're just representing this number. Instead of base 10 blocks, we're using base five blocks, okay? So what's the biggest type of block we can fit in here? Well, 25, right? 25 is five squared. We're gonna have one flat. So once we have one flat, then that means we got 25 done. We need seven left. Well, that means we're gonna use one five, one rod, and then two small blocks. One rod, two small blocks, and that's in base five. Okay, so this is how bases work. We're going to be using different types of building blocks to build our numbers. And any kind of number in base 10 can be represented by any type of number in any type of base. All right, any questions about this? And we can go the other way around because one, because this place is five squared, this is five, and this is one's place. This, this, this one, one, two is the same thing as one times five squared plus one times five plus two times one. All right, it doesn't look like a one. If we were to add these all together, we would get back to 32. Okay, so this is how we transfer between bases. And computers use binary, which is base two. And I think they sometimes use base 16 as well, but we're not gonna go that high. Okay, so any questions about bases? What about base 16? Base 16, we're 16. going to be using letters instead. Okay, we're going to have letters as digits, like letter A is going to be 10, letter B is going to be 11, uh, letter C is going to be 12, and so on. Uh, right? I mean base 60. Base 60, we're never going to use that, that's too much, okay? So these are bases, and yeah, so let's do some problems here. If we're going to turn these into each of these bases, all right? So I'll give you until the end of class to do these and I'll go over them.
All right, I'll just go over these for now. So the first one I'm gonna write this base three number in base 10. So remember how the places basically mean first place is one, three, and then three squared. So 205 in base three is the same thing as two times three squared plus zero times three plus uh, five times one. Okay, three, three, and five, one, okay. So all you need to do is add these together. Three squared is nine times two is 18. And we add zero, add five, just 23. Okay, so that's 205 base three in base 10. Now we're gonna turn base 10 into base six. Well, in base six, we're gonna use ones, sixes, six squares, six cubes, so on. Okay, so what's the largest type of six we can put in 99? Well, six squared is 36. Six cubed is 216. Well, that's too big. So we're going to have a maximum of flats in here. So how many flats can we put in 99? Well, each flat is 36. If we add another flat, we get 72. Another flat, 108. So 108, once we get to 108, that's too much. So we're going to have two flats, two right here. So once we have two flats, how many do we have left? Well, we do 99 minus 72. 7, 2, 27. So how many sixes can go into 27? Well, four. Once we do that, we have three left. So these three go into one. So this is 243 in base six. All right. And now for the last one, when this number is written in base 12, how many trailing zeros does it have? Well, when we did trailing zeros in base 10, we wanted to see how many powers of 10 are in this number. So when we, when we put it in base 12, we're asking ourselves how many powers of 12 are in this number? All right, so all we need to do is find how many powers of 12 are in here, and then we're done. Okay, so two to the six times three squared to the fourth times two to the six times five to the six, because we split this up to two times five. This is gonna be, well, two to the 12th times three to the eighth, and five to the six doesn't matter for 12, right? It mattered for 10, but for 10, for 12, we don't have any fives in there. So we want to find how many powers of 12 are in here. Well, 12 equals 3 times 4. So let's turn this 2 to the 12th into a power of 4, 4 to the 6th. 4 to the 6th times 3 to the 8th. Well, it's going to be 4 to the 6th times 3 to the 6th times 3 squared. These are going to clump together to equal 12 to the 6th times 3 squared. 6 powers of 12, so 6 zeros at the end of this thing, Okay, in base 12. Okay, any questions? The last one was kind of like a problem solving with bases. Okay, so that's going to be it for this, uh, today's class. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, I'll send the homework and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.